We have a question about cooking. What are low EMF alternatives for both cooking and heating? Because Sarah says, well, it, it has come out that gas for cooking and heating ex expose us to a lot of harmful toxins from the gas. That's true. I've been hearing that for years, for, I guess, 13 years I've been doing that around environmental toxins. I keep hearing about poor ventilation and gas uh, heating or uh, or gas stoves. I think that with good ventilation, it might be okay. But when it comes to stovetops, what is your experience, Brian? I know that uh, if you have the, uh, how is it called? Induction. 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 Thank you, Jonathan. Induction. Losing losing my English today. I don't know what's happening. So induction ovens. Uh, in my book, I found uh, concerns in from European scientists that uh, at head level with kids, it might expose them to a few hundred milligauss, which is a, a measure of magnetic fields. And I said, well, that's not good because if if my <coughs> kiddo is is this height and getting his head blasted, I'm getting my my gut and my fertility organs blasted. It's I, I'm not cooking all day, every day, but still, I would rather not have a quite massive magnetic field that I cook with and the effects on the food. I, I personally don't feel good about induction. And then as a, a, I guess, amateur cook that I am, I hate induction of how it heats and whatnot. So uh, yeah. what have you found in your testing, Brian? Uh, low EMF option in cooking or, or, or heaters, I guess. Well, honestly, like the... The, there's a sweet spot between it. I mean, obviously the gas, the gas stovetops don't have any EMF except for possibly like just where the display panel is. Um, but they, you know, as long as you have good ventilation and you remember to turn the fan on, those can be okay. And you can yeah. actually measure the air quality around the, the stove to, to do that. I think Ryan Blazer from Test My Home, like uh, he has all the equipment to kind of measure that. And he talks about that quite a bit too. Okay. Um, but, but for, for me, I think just a normal electric stovetop works good. Not, not induction. Induction does create huge magnetic fields, but uh, I think the sweet spot is just like either the flat top or that old school style with the little spirally, you know, metal. Um, those work great for, and, they don't produce, they still produce a magnetic field, but not nearly as much as induction. And usually there's a spot on, on like on either side, that's going to be a little bit less of a magnetic field than the other. But you also have to remember that um, stressing about these things can also cause the same damage as EMF. So figure out like if you have a Gauss meter or a TF2 or a Semprotect 33, any of those are, are a trip, like it has to be triple access. Uh, Gauss meter. So the Semprotect 33 is one of those and the TF2 is another one. Um, and you just test to see like, where's the best spot to stand while you're cooking. And then don't stand there if you don't have to, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's just going to be a really small time of exposure. Um, and there's other things you can do to kind of prevent the, the damage of, of the EMF as well by, yeah. You know, and, shining red light yeah. on your stomach, maybe before, if you really want to get paranoid about it, you can do like red light on your, on your midsection before you go and, uh, and cook for a few hours or something. Yeah. And I, it depends on how much you cook. I mean, it's like, uh, it's like what I, I, I regret having put some of these examples in my book originally, because I really didn't understand EMF mitigation, but I talked about like, Oh my God, huge exposure of EMFs from a blender. And that's always the silly example I bring back because it was mo one of my early mistakes. Yeah, blender might emit, you know, 500 milligauss right next to the motor, but I'm not sticking my face in the Vitamix, right? And I'm not, even, even if I am doing a shake every morning, what is it, 30 seconds exposure? And I can even move away from it. So it is almost irrelevant to talk about blenders when you have computer, cell phones, tablets, and then what you're putting in your living room like the and bedroom of course where you're spending actual time and not in front of the blender or your toaster right emfs from a toaster is another ridiculous example that sometimes i i used to make people kind of realize the the silliness of it all uh, yeah. but think about you, you know what matters is where you're spending a lot of your time so obviously bedroom office uh living room maybe kitchen table but how much are you really spending cooking take that with a grain of salt you know it's not 
your top priority? Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy, Piano. I am the co-creator of the EMF Circle, along with my colleague, Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. What you saw today, this short video, is a preview of the longer interview that we did for our Circle members. Every month, we have a masterclass like one of these or a Q&A session with me and Brian most of the time. So you get personal support and attention on your EMF reduction journey. So if you want to reduce EMF because you are personally sensitive or you're just trying to take precautionary measures to better your health and minimize the risk associated with wireless and other types of EMFs, then the EMF circle is the place to be. We have a ton of archives now. We have several months worth of Q&As that you can and listen back to everything is pre record is recorded you can either join live or just listen to the replay so we have a cars masterclass we have a pr free protection masterclass uh, uh, also that we did and we're going to have several other master classes moving forward so we hope that you join us inside the emf circle just visit emfcircle.com or click the link under the video to join us i hope to see you then